Turn number 13 is just about to be, well, actually it has begun. I like to roll out the weather uh, right away. And so I've already done that. But uh, let me just cover a few things that have happened over the last couple of turns. Uh, as you can see, the situation has changed dramatically. The Germans, just a few turns ago, uh, turn 8, really was um, a near-run thing. If, if the Allies had take under, undergone that disaster in the... Uh, the valley here that could have uh, boy that could have been a game changer and might have sealed the deal for the Germans. That's why I took the risk. I I felt it was a, a worthwhile risk. They had some bad luck with the dice for once. They had had very good run of luck with the dice, and they nearly liquidated this particular beachhead, but they failed to do so, and they've taken casualties. And finally, we got the attrition uh, rolling in the Allied favor in this sector. So after a three-day battle. Uh, Nochera and Fiore has fallen to the uh, 7th Armored, uh, the infantry from the 7th Armored uh, Division. And so we can start bringing the tanks around from here. We can start bringing them into the party. So for now, that's the uh, that's the scoop in this front. This is a bad situation for the Germans. Uh, you might be wondering, what is this tank destroyer doing way the heck over here? Well, I originally brought him into the beachhead here, through the into the port here, because that... I needed two more defense factors, and the port could handle the one-step unit. Uh, it was available. That's why I went for it. So once this got secured and the Germans pulled back, I started just kind of moving them around using extended movement. That forced the Germans to counter with the garrison, get it close enough that it can't use any more extended movement. Um, but uh, he's, he's just barely in supply range. It's just barely got enough... Uh, one, two, three, four, five back to the road and then to the port. So he's in supply. He moves one more hex. He's out. And the port, none of the ports over here can uh, function as supply sources due to, to uh, mining, which is why their port value is in parentheses. But he could make a lunge at one of these guys here. So the Germans have to deal with that, and that further dilutes the defense here. So what's probably going to happen is we're probably going to see these guys shift their position to here using extended movement. And we're probably going to have to use the new Hermann Goering uh, battalion, bring him in, probably go ahead and attack that, get, get a nice three to one. Um, yeah, because he doesn't have his defense doubled. Two to one with an elite. Yeah, he'd, he'd be three to one. And then if I threw in the artillery, that'd be four to one. Might be worth trying something like that just to, to push them back, get that guy out of there uh, or uh, compel him to retreat. So that's probably what's going to happen there. Uh, got a pretty big pileup of British units. The 56th Division has moved from – Benapalia um, was just about um, a British disaster. I mean they just about – uh, failed to take that city, but now they've they've won the city, and now they've shifted up here. So all the Commonwealth units have just basically focused their attention uh, to the northwest now. So uh, these guys here are probably going to go ahead and uh, try to open up this valley here and uh, in, in their half of the turn. So the Germans have got to find some way to keep this line as steady as possible. Of some concern is that the airborne unit, I had them here. I slipped him over here. Now, why I did that, I felt it was a justifiable risk of losing that guy. He's not in supply. I should have him marked with a supply marker. I'll have to do that because the mountain hex side and you can't move through more than one uh, enemy Zox. So, yeah, he's out of supply. But I did that to try to um, cut the road and put a Zox here in order to um, uh, slow down the, the extended march movement of these guys. That was my purpose in that. Whether that's a good move or not, we'll find out. I've, I've made some dumb moves, so we'll see. In this sector, the Germans are trying to hold a, a line while withdrawing uh, using extended marches. So there's been no fighting down here, and they're slowly reaccumulating their supply points. The Canadians are, have arrived. Uh, now they're going to have to start sliding this way because of the... 8th Army boundary line, it runs right about here and then juts north. I think you can only have one brigade from 8th Army on the other side of that. So these guys can't drive like so. That would be ideal because we probably uh, could catch a bunch of this army out in the open and destroy it where before it becomes a factor up in the critical sectors here in the north. So this 
looks scarier than what it in fact will be for the Germans. The Germans are going to be able to get out of this trap. I left these guys in the south too long and nearly lost them. Um, they got lucky in order to not be uh, be destroyed, but we're going to have to uh, get them out of there using extended movement and uh, start shunting them up to the north. As far as the Allies go, things have definitely shifted in their favor. As you can see, the position on the board as well as the victory points being at 11 and the benchmark is 10. So they're on the right side of that for once. Germans have all of the reinforcements that they're going to get in the game. So we're done over here. All that's on the board. Uh, the Allies still have uh, some units from the 3rd Division. And then we start getting in the units from 34th Division, including one that is an elite battalion. And we'll start... Uh, bringing those guys in, probably using the port of Salerno. I've already got 3rd Infantry uh, making uh, its presence down here, and we'll start to um, find a use for them in that sector. I felt that that was a better use for them than bringing them down here and then marching them, uh, spending a lot of time marching them, because I think that the critical sector might be in this area here. In hindsight, I probably should have somebody start uh, banging away at this guy here and using artillery and, and massive column shifts to try to uh, break this uh, uh, mountain pass here. Once this road is open, I mean, if the Allies can break that road open and force their way through, that unhinges everything down here. I have not done that. Uh, I've, I've kept up a close pursuit and a relatively cautious pursuit. 82nd Airborne's taken uh, some casualties that the Allies will not be able to start replacing until turn 18, and they will only get one step back from those. So that is something that the Allies have got to be careful. I can't just be throwing away, throwing these 82nd Airborne into low odds attacks. Um, I've got to, I've got to find a better use for them. So I've been basically attaching them to or partnering them up with other divisions that have artillery support. Allies don't have the Americans don't have enough. Uh, supply points to get their artillery um, up and running here in the south. So I've had to kind of hold off on attacks, and that's giving the Germans breathing space to get out of this pickle. Up in the north, I've been giving maximum artillery supply points to the Commonwealth because they're making progress. So let's keep feeding the machine. For the Germans, the weather track finally moved, and finally they're uh, they got one turn where they have more supply coming in than the Allies, so they got three supply points to one, which means they'll be able to refuel, rearm all of their, uh, or, or at least three of their artillery units. So I'll have to decide which ones I want to get. Probably core artillery, uh, probably the Panzer Grenadier artillery, and probably this core artillery. I'll probably use all three of those. I'll leave the 16 Panzer alone because they're going to be withdrawing here in one more turn. So this is, I think, the last turn with them. So that is the situation after uh, two more turns of Salerno 43. The game has definitely shifted. It has a new pace, a new feel, and we are on the uh, definitely on the full second half of the game. We'll see how things work from here.